So far, we solved the wave equation in the acoustic case, the scalar wave equation in one dimension and two dimensions. The scalar wave equation is uh, descriptive of sound propagation. And what I would like to introduce now is the um, elastic wave equation, which is very similar. Actually, it's uh, to some extent equivalent uh, to the scalar wave equation in the one dimensional case. And it's descriptive of basically the motion of a string. Now, before we go into the uh, the actual mass, the wave equation, and the finite difference approximation, let's do a little bit of physics. I'd like to introduce the concept of stresses and the shear modulus. And for that, I'll uh, resort to my instrument, the guitar, uh, and we'll just make uh, an example. So that's uh, basically an, an elastic uh, uh, string here. And what we have, if we... Uh, pull the string, we have elastic waves. Now, uh, what we need to describe the physics of that is actually the concept of stress. So if I pull here a string in one direction, um, I exert a force, of course, and you see that there is an, an angle uh, generated. And actually, the proportionality constant the, between the elongation and that angle is the so-called shear modulus. And that leads to the concept of um, stress, uh, the stress-strain relation, uh, which uh, is given here. Actually, in that uh, simple case, the strain is proportional, the stress is proportional to the strain, and the proportionality constant is the shear modulus uh, mu. And so on the left-hand side, stress is called uh, uh, sigma. And because we're in one dimensions, uh, in general, it's a tensor, but in one dimension, it's just uh, one component. Uh, it's sigma is equal to mu times the space derivative of the displacement u. In that case, it would be uy. Uh, if we define the string to be in x direction, it would be uh, um, a translation in perpendicular in the y direction. So again, the stress-strain relation would be sigma is equal to mu times the partial derivative with respect to x of u, the displacement. And that's going to be the one, one of the ingredients that we put into, uh, an, into the wave equation that we then solve using finite differences. Okay, let's use that concept of stress and develop the elastic wave equation in one dimensions. Um, now, the wave equation constitutes on the left-hand side the uh, density multiplying the second time derivative of the displacement u, um, which equates the divergence of the stress. The stress, as we've seen before, is simply the shear modulus times the uh, space derivative of the displacement, which is called the strain. And we keep it as, uh, as a sigma in, in, in that equation. Now, if we look at the entire equation, then we see that, first of all, we know that the shear modulus might actually depend on x. If you think of the string that I just showed you, um, maybe that's not so realistic because we assume that the, the shear modulus of the string is the same. It's homogeneous. Maybe not if it's a, it's a very old string. Um, but uh, let's, for the moment, assume that it's uh, homogeneous. Actually, then we can take it out of the uh, partial derivative uh, uh, sign here, and um, and then we have we are left on the right hand side with the second derivative with respect to space of the displacement. Now, if we uh, take the density on the right, we divide by the density uh, in that equation. We are left basically on the right hand side with uh, mu divided by rho multiplying the Laplace operator of the um, the displacement, the second uh, space derivative. And now something very important, there's a very famous result from elasticity that actually the shear velocity, let's call it uh, c, is equal to the square root, square root of um, mu divided by rho. So in other words, we can, divide, we can uh, replace mu divided by rho by c square. And uh, here we go. You will probably see that um, this equation now is basically mathematically entirely equivalent to the acoustic wave equation. We have a second time derivative on the left-hand side. Uh, we have a square of velocities multiplying the Laplace operator on the right-hand side. 
Um, that basically just serves to show the equivalence of these two equations, at least in the homogeneous case. But of course, what's now becoming more interesting is what happens if um, the uh, the shear modulus depends on space, which is you know normally the case in general. In the, for example, take the Earth. Uh, of course, the, the rigidity uh, is a function of of, of space, um, and that will actually lead to a, a special solution scheme uh, concerning the finite difference uh, method that I would like to um, to show you in the next couple of minutes. So starting from the wave equation that we've just derived, um, we we're now actually this is a second order equation because it contains uh, second derivatives both in space and time. And actually, what we do now we'll turn this into a first order partial differential equation, and that has uh, a lot of consequences as to the way we will solve this uh, numerically. In order to do that, actually, if we first uh, actually write uh, uh, we replace uh, on the left hand side the displacement by the velocity. The velocity the, the, the velocity is the uh, first derivative of the displacement, so partial derivative with respect to time uh, of u. And uh, so we add that uh, on the left-hand side, and basically that replaces the second derivative by a first derivative. On the right-hand side, uh, we'll keep the stress. For, let's forget about the uh, source terms at the moment. But we add another equation, and that's actually the one for the stress, which now the partial derivative with respect to time of the stress, so that's basically a stress rate, equals uh, on the right-hand side mu times the partial derivative of space of v. And v itself, again, is the velocity, the uh, time derivative of u. Now, this uh, is now a coupled system of equations. And actually now, not only the velocity is unknown, but also the stresses are unknown. So this is a, a, a system, is actually a, a hyperbolic system of equations. And this formulation is called the velocity stress formulation of the elastic wave equation. And it's very important because many of the algorithms, or numerical algorithms, computer uh, software that is today used, for example, in seismology and many other fields, also in fluid dynamics, are actually based um, on such a, a coupled formulation. And we will now proceed to find a way to solve that using finite differences. So what we will do now, actually, we introduce a new concept, so-called staggered grids. In order to do that, let's go back to the original definition of finite differences. Usually we have on a regular grid uh, functions defined at say x, x plus dx, x minus dx, and a first derivative approximation can be um, calculated using, for example, the difference of f of x plus dx minus f of x minus dx divided by 2dx. That's called a centered scheme. Another centered scheme could be um, if we know a function uh, let's say at points f of x plus dx over 2 and f of x uh, minus uh, dx over 2, um, then we can take those two uh, function values, uh, take that derivative and divide by dx. Um, and then the derivative is actually defined in between uh, those points, and that's where the term staggered comes from. Now, the question is actually, can we... Um, develop a scheme that makes use of this uh, grid staggering. That means maybe I do not know the function and its derivatives at the same point, but I know the function at a certain grid and I know the derivative of this function um, in between the, the, the function grid. And that's, again, this is the so-called uh, staggered grid formulation. Why would we do that? Well, um, if we have basically for the same computational um, uh, effort, we, we can live uh, with a grid spacing of dx rather than 2dx for the derivative, we certainly have gained in accuracy. And uh, so that's a very important uh, aspect. And we now proceed to try and apply this concept uh, to our newly derived um, elastic wave equation. So let's do this step by step and don't panic. At first sight, that looks a bit complicated, I admit. But um, you will have time later to look at this in, in more detail. So let's start with the 
uh, basically the first part of the equation, where we have on the left-hand side um, the uh, row multiplying the first derivative of uh, velocity. And on the right-hand side, we have the divergence of the stress, which is the space derivative of the stress. Now, let's uh, first uh, define a discretization of the stress, and you see that here in the graphics. So, um, let's assume for the moment, um, and you know we've uh, done that, we have a discretization in space and time, and um, we will know the stress stresses at time level j, and we actually know it, know them um, at a, uh, a space grid that is in between full indices. And we call that uh, basically, for example, sigma i plus one half uh, minus sigma i minus one half divided by dx will uh, basically provide us with a, a first derivative at time level j. Uh, it will be multiplied by one over rho that's actually defined at, uh, at, at i, because the derivative of, of stress, so defined, is actually uh, defined, of course, at grid points i directly. Now, the left-hand side, um, we have the space, the time, sorry, the time derivative of the velocity field. Uh, the velocities are defined at, uh, in space at grid points i. And uh, here we're actually taking the difference between um, the velocities at time levels j plus one half and j minus half. So vi j plus one half minus vi j minus one half divided by t is of course the first derivative of the velocity field, which is the acceleration. And uh, this equates now the uh, previously already introduced um, space derivative of the stresses. Now, um, as you can see in the graph, both are defined at the same point. So we can we see here this discretization of, of the, the space-time in, in two-dimensional form. And uh, both derivatives are staggered, um, but they are defined at the same uh, point in space-time. And now that's uh, very important. So what about the stresses? This is the next equation. We have the time derivative of the stress equating mu times the space derivative of vx. Now again, if we start with the right-hand side, we will actually have um, velocities uh, that are defined at time level j plus one half, and uh, both, and uh, we equate or we take the difference of the velocities at points i plus one minus uh, points defined at, at, at i, vi, divided by dx. So that's a, a first derivative, that's called a forward derivative because along the axis uh, denoted by i, we actually look in positive uh, i direction. Um, and the derivative, of course, is then defined at point i plus one half in between those grid points. And that's why we're multiplying it with the shear modulus mu defined at i plus one half. So that's the covers the right hand side. So, and on the left hand side, we have the time derivative of the stresses. Um, both, well, they're in space defined at uh, i plus one half, like the right hand side. And in time, uh, we're actually uh, taking the difference of the stresses at j plus one minus the stresses at j. So in time, uh, they are defined at, uh, at time step j plus one half. Uh, and again, you see on that two dimensional graph, that both derivatives are defined at the same point in space-time. Now, if we put all this together, um, again, just like in all other examples we had with the finite difference formulation, we can now basically for both equations, first for the uh, equation for velocities, then for the stresses, uh, extract the future uh, and express uh, basically, the, the future uh, velocities and stresses as a function of everything else uh, that we know either at the present time step or at another time step in the past. And basically, even though that looks um, very complicated, this is actually an extremely elegant scheme. And uh, the import, most important concept is that the, 
the, the grid staggering is entirely consistent. We never uh, have need the derivatives at other points rather than those we, we introduced. Um, but it's always important to realize that um, the, now the velocities and the stresses and, for example, rho and mu are defined at different points in space-time. And again, that's the concept of staggered grids. So on paper, that actually looks quite confusing, right? And uh, it will need some time to actually digest this quite complicated form formula. But uh, actually, just to remove your fear, uh, uh, look at me at this simple uh, piece of Python code that we will later also encounter in the Jupyter Notebooks. And to, uh, just for you to see, in the actual code, this looks much simpler because there you don't have to play with uh, plus one half, minus one half, and so forth, because you will simply de derive, uh, define vectors that are defined at different locations. So you can see here, it's very simple. You first start with a, uh, a, a finite difference calculation, simple finite difference calculation uh, of the stresses, then you extrapolate uh, the velocities, and then you take the, the derivative, the, the finite difference uh, calculation of the velocities, and you extrapolate the stresses. So it's actually a very, very elegant, uh, a simple algorithm that's extremely powerful. And again, this, is, uh, this kind of algorithm is used in many, many different uh, fields. And um, uh, so that's why it is important actually to cover that uh, topic.